Being a technical evangelist, I was always traveling. I was always going to a conference because essentially your job, like I said, which is what developer advocates are now, right? Is you are on a vertical and you're always sharing the latest and greatest. So I would go to conferences and it's just like, I'm talking about this new project that I built on this new Microsoft technology. And this is why you as a software engineer should be doing it. The best way to know if you know something, like if you are super technical, is if you can teach it. Welcome back to the Textual Talk Podcast, where I'm your host, HD, where we talk about tech news, life in tech careers, and much, much more. In today's episode, I have a lovely guest for y'all. Her name is Gabrielle. I'm not going to butcher her last name. I'm going to let her say it. But if y'all watching this on YouTube, y'all know what to do. Hit thumbs up, subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell icon to be notified when we're dropping all content. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, you know what to do. Follow us, leave us a review. It really helps us out in the podcast metrics. But for all those, for those of you down on the Patreon, you already been hearing like our great talk. But now everybody else, is, we're going to get straight into the meat and potatoes of why you came to listen to this episode. So let's bring it to the stage. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be here. Yeah. So a um, little bit of background is. I saw you on, I want to say, was it Jawan stuff? No, no, no. It was not Jawan Techie. It was Dre, Dre the Plug. I yes, think. yes, Dre the Plug. Yes, yes, yes. I saw that you on Dre the Plug stuff, and I reached out. I said, oh, she's a software engineer. Like, at that time, I want to say when I reached out to you, I think I hadn't had a software engineer on the show. I think I've already had one. He's been a male. But I believe mm-hmm. you would be my first woman software engineer. I'm not a software engineer anymore. Well, you have been a software engineer and you'd be giving people game on how to give be a software engineer and learn how to code i do my best i do my best okay fine i check the box <laughs> we'll talk about it we'll talk about it a, a little bit but i thought it was pretty cool because i know i have some assumptions about like your ig name no way she codes that we're mm. get into like how you came up with that name but i haven't okay. i'm pretty sure like you probably tell somebody what you do and the dude was like no way she codes yeah that's it's, it's not usually negative it's usually like, <gasps> for real like no way that's what you do like so what what are we so shocked about and fun fact i was really annoyed about this fun fact a male stole my name i don't know if he still goes by it but he stole my name and there was no way he codes and i was like dude it, it's not the same thing like it's not the same kind but whatever i let him have it it wasn't worth the argument I'm the original, so whatever. Hey, when you did that little thing just now, I thought about that little meme of that girl in the lunch lunch room. What are you talking about meme? You know a little meme? Like if you type in the meme with a girl, like do the thing you just did. I don't even know what I did. You was like, <laughs> I can't. It's like it's something that she does. I will find the meme and, and send it to you. Just, it's just, like just, a meme with a little black girl. Video. Just put it in the video. Just put in the video. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, I cool. don't know. I may, if I remember, I'm going to pop that meme up like at this part right here. Yeah, so boom. Check, so you can see it. Mm-hmm. But Gabrielle, could you introduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah, I can. Hi, everyone. I am Gabrielle Kresker, but I go by Gabby, um, aka No Issue Codes on all platforms YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Did I miss one? uh no yeah that's pretty much it um i have been in tech professionally like out of school since 2015 so if i do the math correctly it's nine years um i have been a developer a technical evangelist but now they call them developer advocates i've been a software engineer i'm now a product manager um and fun fact that nobody really knows anymore um, cause I don't do anything in this realm, but I actually, while I was a software engineer, I went back to school to become an electrical engineer. That didn't happen, but, and school was crazy. Don't ever work and do a master's degree full time, but I have the degree. I just never use it. So I guess I'm an electrical engineer too. Um, and for fun, I mean, I am into all the nerdy things, uh, Harry Potter, anime, I can't get into Lord of the Rings. It just doesn't, it's not my vibe. But like, I love stuff like Game of Thrones and whatever. And um, yeah, 
that that's me normally if i'm not at my computer i am watching something on tv and trying to take a nap and eating really something really good that's cool so i heard all of your your tv choices have you been watching shogun no i don't know what that is shogun is uh, I want to say it's based in the 1600s before some type of, I think, believe, uh, Japan Civil War, Japanese Civil War, I believe. What is it on? FX. Okay. And so you, you think I would watch, like that? Yeah. And then you can watch everything on Hulu. Like, uh, it does like the same night or the next day on Hulu. And uh, so far, it's probably the best show I watched this year. Like, acting, pacing. Okay. But it says it's a miniseries. So does that mean that's it? Like, once it's done, it's done? I believe so, because it's a book. And so, uh, okay. yeah, and they said they're not going to go past a season because they don't want to try, like, they say, like, a lot of series try to do too much and stray away from what happened and it just turns into, like, something that's not supposed to be. So, I, I can respect AKA, that. AKA Game of Thrones season seven. I, you know what's funny? I've never watched an episode of Game of Thrones. Okay, let's, really quickly, let, I just want to, this isn't my time to convince you but I will say it is top tier television, top, top tier. Like I, that was also something that I was like, yo, I'm never watching this. I watched one episode with a friend one day and I was like, yo, this is a lot. Like I, this, this, everything that happened in that episode, I was like, this is too, too much. But then I got my wisdom teeth pulled and I couldn't do anything for like a week cause I was on drugs. Um, and <laughs> they were prescribed. And um, I, yeah, I watched the first season. I made it through the first season. It was just, it's really a building up. The first season, like you're really building up. But that last episode, and anybody who's seen it knows, that last episode, you know, we taken off from there. So if you do decide to watch it, don't even worry about it. You can watch season seven, but after like the third or fourth episode, just turn it off. You could, you can Google the rest. Yeah, I mean, I think I probably will watch it. I, I I will approach it like I had to do One Piece like four years ago. Like I have finally gave in during the pandemic. I I'm started about to One up. Piece, so I started One Piece back then, and yeah. I also started watching JoJo's back then too. Okay, but let's talk about this One Piece journey because I'm on it right now. I don't know why I did this to myself. I'm only on episode like two hundred and some, and I get what people are saying, like. Up these 200 episodes, like this is great anime, but like also, damn, I feel like I haven't even like made a dent in the 1,800 and whatever episodes that there are that are still going. Yeah, so it's like, am I ever gonna make it? So I started to skip around, so like I would watch it, and then when I realized that episode was a filler, wasn't like straight to what was happening, I would just read the title and say, okay, this is where it is, because like I didn't care about none of that stuff, I wanted to get where it was at. So I had, I don't know if I had caught up actually back whenever I watched it. I don't think I ever caught up. And so I just started either probably trying to tune into the, the manga or just going to people like Anime's Ball Deep and stuff like that and getting them to tell me about it. Cause I was like, I just I ain't got the time to sit around and watch it as much as I would want so to. So you cheated. Absolutely. It's only cheating to get <laughs> I don't want to cheat. I really want to do it, but I'm like, I understand why people cheat. Like I really do. Cause there's just no way. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's great. I think Wayno, it's like, I really say after, uh, what's that Marine fold? It's Marine fold. I want to say the battle, but I don't know where you are, how far you are. 200. We just left sky Island. Okay. So and they no, no, actually, no, we're past, we're past that. Actually, they were stuck in like a little marine area and they just got out of it. Like they fell from the sky and they fell into like a marine area and they just escaped that. And oh, actually, I'm in a, I'm wow, I'm way further than I thought I was. Now they're like battling these pirates that play games and if they win, they usually take your crew. So like we don't lost Chopper like twice. Um I remember that that's one. where I'm at. All the major stuff for like that's what I'm saying. I don't want to spoil it because I can't remember where they meet these people at. But you know, these people know, you know, Luffy's brother and stuff. So I okay, I've I have met Luffy's brother. Yeah, the you last Ace and Des, uh, what's the Destarosa? I think that's what it is. The last, what's the word I'm gonna say? The last um, crew member we added because I know they constantly add crew members and like 
the, like there's so many people I haven't met yet that's in the main story is Nico Robin. She's the last person, like last okay. person added to the crew. So. Cool, cool. Cool. Sorry, guys. You know how you can just have a whole pod talking about anime. I, I know this is not the direction. Sorry. I almost got it. No, it's cool. It's cool. Because I'm the one that introduced it when I started talking about the show Shogun. But now to get back into the questioning here. So you are born and raised in New York, right? Yes and no. I I feel like, okay, I feel like I'm more of a New York girl than anything. But I feel like my family does too. Um, but I left New York around high school and moved to Florida. Um, and then after Florida, I went to college and then I had a real job and then I just moved back during the pandemic. So I think through and through I am, but that's what I claim. Everybody's not always happy about it, but who cares? Yeah, I got you. So what about high school? I guess when, when you went to college, did you know what you want to do? No, um, that's a really good question. I had no idea that I was going to end up with this degree. When I um, went to Florida State, I thought I wanted to be an oral maxillofacial surgeon. That's a lot to say, which means I still would have been in, or I think I would have just been finishing school. Like I would have been just starting my career right now because essentially you're an oral surgeon, so you have to go to dental school and medical school. They have like a, a way to combine them. Then I would have my residency, all that. Um, but I got to chemistry. And I was like, it's giving hell no. So I decided to change my major. And in changing my major, I just wanted to change my major to something I felt like was going to be easy for me that I could quickly graduate. Like I didn't have to add another year to my studies. Um, and all of my credits transferred to computer science. And all I knew about computer science is you just have to be good at math. And I was good at math. So I did it. Um, only coding I did before that was MySpace. And I don't mean like regular copy and paste MySpace. I mean, I was like hacking my page in MySpace. I just didn't know that's what that was. Um, cause Cause. MySpace was, was, was HTML, Java. It was every, it really was all of it. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that's what it was. So when I started classes, I still didn't even realize it was the same thing because in classes you're learning C++. Oh, my classes, we were, at Florida State, we learned C++. Um, and I think I took like a web dev, like side course, cause that wasn't a part of the main curriculum. And that's when I was like, oh, no wonder this C++ seemed familiar cause I was already doing this over here. So needless to say, I passed those classes with flying colors, but no, I had no idea. I didn't know what being a software engineer was. I had no idea. I wasn't exposed to any of that. It wasn't a thing. A lot of, I had a funny thing to say when you was talking about MySpace. I was like, tell me you're a millennial without saying you're a millennial. <laughs> and that, Hello? you said it was that one. And two, you said you was at Florida State. So you were there when uh, Famous Jameis was there? I was there for Famous Jameis. And I actually worked in football recruiting at that time. So I would see him all the time. I don't think he knows me because I was like, oh my God, hi. And that just wasn't me. <laughs> but I would see him all the time. And he's like one of the funniest dudes without trying to be funny. Like online like he, he's hilarious <laughs> I, yes. and taking it away from famous Jameis like I was there when we were national champions which he's a part of clearly but like yeah he wasn't my highlight it was the fact that we were national champions that was my highlight no nah, I feel so. you know nah, I just started laughing about him and them crab legs <laughs> oh lord he didn't really steal them though he probably didn't but it's just the he fact didn't. like it's always just something. It's always something. So, okay. So you major in computer science and I guess you do. Okay. Let me ask you this before we get past that. Mm -hmm. Would you still recommend computer science to everyone? Or would you say choose computer science based on your temperament as a person? Um, that's tough. I, I'm always going to say yes to computer science. Why? Because it's the easiest path to a job. You think so? Like, yeah. And I, 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 I talk, I have talked a lot about 
you can get jobs, you know, you don't need a degree. And I still firmly believe that, like that, I, this is not saying like those opportunities are not available. However, a computer science degree, like will put you in positions and you could be not as qualified as someone who went to a boot camp, right? But especially if you go to a good engineering school, like recruiting is crazy. So, and there are, especially for like Florida State itself wasn't even like, it was a good school, it wasn't a big engineering school, but there were set companies who came to Florida State every year because of the computer science, um, the computer science department. Um, and so I just feel like you're not coming in clearly as like, oh, you're about to come in and be senior from computer science, clearly. But even if you look at a lot of times, if you don't have a degree and you're coming from a boot camp or you just off the strength of your skills, you usually come in as like an associate or a junior. For you to get a job like right out of school, you just come at beginner level. You're not, associate and junior is like lower than that. It's lower than just being a software engineer, right? Like there's associate, junior, then software engineer, then whatever the next tier is for every company is kind of different. But usually out of school, you're not coming in as junior, you're coming in as a regular software engineer. So I'm always gonna say computer science. There's other circumstances why it may not work, but when you want less of the friction um, of that like school is over and I need to get a job, like that pipeline, going to school for a computer science degree is a lot easier for that. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, just from a, a higher level, just talking about going to school, there is a lot of discourse about, oh, you don't need a degree, which but I think both of you, both of us agree that no, you don't need a degree, but can it help you? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so that's what, what I always tell people when I have consultations, should I go to school? I was like, listen, if you get to find the best way or cheapest way to go to school without own, you know, debt by all means, go, especially if you're black. I tell them straight up, I was like, it's tough on us as it is. So I was like, unless you have, like you said, elite skills, like you said, from a boot camp or something, you need everything you need to get you a job. Yeah, and I think too, I've worked at three different boot camps, four. I've worked at a lot of different boot camps. Um, and I do think boot camps are still on the up and up. N not all boot camps are A, respected. That's A. And then mm -hmm. B, not all companies are suited for boot camp graduates. So, because in reality, like boot camps are teaching the meat, like just what you really need to know. But there's still all these other things, like all these other classes that I took that employees are expecting that are learned on the job and that's fine. But I think that's also why it's it's a little bit more difficult yeah. in the pipeline. And I think that's why they come in as junior or associate. No, I, I totally agree because I think it's, I always say like there are different things on any technical job that you just don't learn sometimes from a course. I only learn from experience. Yeah, and it's very true. And so I've, I've definitely dealt with that. Like I when I make this other course, I, I plan to say it's going to be different from any course you've taken. It's going to be, hey, if you got offered this job today, but you don't know what you're doing, after this course, you should know what you're doing on Monday. That type of <laughs> course, like that, that type of stuff don't really exist in the boot camp. It doesn't. You know, you have to know how to navigate. Like for me, I'm in IR, sec, security operations. So there are very technical courses out there, but it doesn't mesh all together. Like, okay, what would an actual day look like? And I was doing it. How would I do it? And how would I do it being a person who don't have that much information on the environment? And that's where I come in because I worked in places where I have a lot of information, but I had experience enough of knowing how I could find the information I need. But if you're a newer person, you don't have that. And then sometimes they don't have people to train you adequately. And then they may be trying to see, mm -hmm. okay, you kind of behind. And actually, you're not behind. It's really on them because they didn't like train you properly. Get you prepared. Yeah. And I think like, when I was teaching at boot camps, I would always tell my students, like, be patient with yourself because there's just, there's so much you don't know. And like I said, I, I would explain to them all the time. Cause I'd be like, I went, you know, I, I did this. So what I learned in three years, they're cramming into like six months to a year, which is crazy. But that extra practice, like one class I really liked at Florida State that we had 
and I hope they still have it. <clears throat> the class is literally called software engineering. The software engineering one and two, and the purpose of one and two is two semesters long, and it's two semesters of like working on a real world project. Granted, you know, the product usually was somebody's idea or X, Y, Z, like something in school, but it's actually like we're using, we were using GitHub. We were actually doing standups in class. Like, you know, like it was giving more of something that boot camps don't have to have that time to do that necessarily. So. No, I agree. Cause that's, that's a major, that's to me, that's even better than the capstone. Like we had a capstone with a, you know, a combination of everything you learn and you're doing it in there. So, I mean, it's kind of cool. It's like, we had, everyone had to design, uh, we had a systems analysis and design class. So we had to design for us, we did like an inventory thing for our intramural. They didn't have any way how they figured out, you know, what shoes were in and out. And so don't laugh, but they, cause I graduated undergrad in 2013, November, 2013, but they had us using visual basic to code. <laughs> Why they would they tell you like that? Basic. Ew. I, yeah, that's the thing is like, I don't know why they didn't adopt some of the stuff from computer science. See, I did information systems because all our professors were foreign and they couldn't talk. And I was like, I don't have time to deal with the language barrier. And I knew I've always been a person where, well, the stuff I know now, I, if I know back then, it's like, hey, whatever you really want to learn, just learn on your free time. Yeah, but the soft skills you kind of learn from being in business help out a lot. I've seen sometimes where that can kind of help sometimes fast track you a little bit more than a person who may be a little bit more technical than you because they don't necessarily have those soft skills to appreciate themselves or everybody else or just be likable (laughs) in so many words when it comes to this corporate game that we all got to play. So, but now that we answered that about like going to school or not, like I said, we both said yes. So your first, so correct me if I'm wrong. I know you said did uh, software engineering one and two. There they go. It's okay. <laughs> no, nah, they got, they got me uh, on my thing. So I know you said you did software engineering one and two, or I think it was just right. Software engineering one and two. Mm-hmm. Does that count for an internship in your book or did you do any internships? No, it doesn't count as an internship. It's something like we got to talk about or put on our resume. But no, I actually had an internship that was with the Department of Education. So Florida State is in Florida's capital, which is Tallahassee. The Department of Education was there too. So I had like a part-time web development role that helped. And then I also had an internship at General Motors. Um, I think internships are very important. One, besides your degree, they just make you already look better than some other people that don't because you have real world experience. Um, Even if the project you worked on at that internship was trash, even if you know, the the place you were interning in doesn't even want you back. Like, that's not important. You have something to talk about. Like, nothing beats experience. Nothing. Like, no grade, no GPA, no nothing is beating the experience of your internships. So I had two, um, and I feel like they helped. Cool. So did you, so was your, like, internship was remote? Did you go to one of the GM locations throughout the United States or...? Back then, we didn't really do remote. So I you had to Detroit? move. I moved to, I didn't work in downtown. We worked in Warren. I ain't familiar with it. It's okay. It's, it was like 30, 40 minutes away from the downtown campus. But yeah, essentially, I moved to Detroit. Okay. That was an interesting, no. that was an interesting um, experience. Michigan. Why you say it like that? I lo- I like Detroit. I I'm not not I'm not not a fan. I think it's cool to like visit, but I was like I can't live here. Oh yeah, nah, nah no, 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 no. But you no, know no. what? They I've been looking at like some of the construction and stuff that's going on downtown Detroit. Like they're gonna come up again. And I hope so because it honestly is such a beautiful city, and it's just such a shame like what's happening in the environment and these abandoned homes and everything like that because it is it is a beautiful city. Downtown Detroit on the water, like it is gorgeous. 
So I hope it is because they deserve. Yeah. Okay. So you do your internships and it's time to graduate. How long did it take you to find a job? I tell everybody this. This this is my my ticket. My like if I if you take anything from what I, what what are these emojis? If you take anything nope. from what I'm about to say, start looking for your job as soon as the semester starts. Like I started job hunting 2 weeks before my senior year started. And I had a job by that November. So my last semester, I was chilling. I just need to pass my classes. I'm not looking for a job. I'm not whatever. And the truth is what I've learned, corporate recruiting usually starts at that time too. Like a week or two before semester start is when they start to like, that's when they're going, they're, the job fairs are happening at schools and stuff like that. Most people will say, oh, they're focusing on internships and they are but they are still trying to fill their corporate role. So any corporate role you normally get like in the spring or after, like after spring semester is like, this is just what's left. Don't be what's left. Get ahead of the curve. Start applying for jobs in August. Yeah. But see, I think also with you is, like you said, I think you were able to leverage your skills more with the internship and the uh, capstone class, like all the stuff you learned, I'm pretty sure you were able to speak to that in your interviews. If Facts, but I do, on the flip side, I do feel like interviewing is also a skill. And the earlier, the better. You at least know like, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to work on, X, Y, Z. But it's also like, yeah, that like, for example, our software engineering course, like most companies are aware of what the rest of your classes are or like what's left. So they're not going to hold it against you. I mean, other people that got hired at the same time I got hired, two people didn't have internships at all. So yeah. from Florida State. No, I, I asked that too, because I did a episode a while back and I was reading an article. I don't know if it was from Fortune, Yahoo or Business Insider or whatever, but it was saying... Gen Z is having a hard time landing jobs and not prepared for interviews. And I was telling them, hey, most schools don't prepare anybody to interview. I know. Totally honest. I was like, this, the, the classes you really need, that's not your curriculum. There is no interview class. There is no, hey, how to navigate corporate. Now, what to do to, if I get on the PIP? What to do, how like email communication. They don't teach those classes, the classes that will actually matter if you got a job. And that's true. <laughs> And I, I would tell people like, um, especially my boot campies, right? Like your first interview is not gonna be great. It's probably gonna suck. Like not even gonna lie to you, but the best thing to do, and it, I think it's also what helped me because by the time I got a job, I already had two offers. I was gonna um, ask you that too. Yeah, I had two offers and I just stopped looking because I got Microsoft, where else am I gonna go? But um, by that time, I had what I called like my interview book, which was like the black marble notebooks. And after every interview, like, I mean, like I closed the phone or I walked out that office. I mean, as soon as that interview was over, I wrote everything down in that notebook. What did they ask me? Um, where did I feel like I had a hard time? What did I feel like I absolutely knew? And that was like my Bible. Like I, re yes, boom, I referenced that book for every time I had another interview. And it just, eventually like companies aren't gonna ask you the same exact scenario, but they're gonna ask you something like you already had. And if you were like, oh, I've been studying the solution. Boom, you got it, sis. Like it's interviewing itself is a skill, which which sucks because then, like you said, no one's teaching you that, but it's a fact. The yeah, earlier, the better. For sure. And that's why like with my clients, my goal is to, once I get that, resume done and we did the stuff that you have to work on is to get us to start getting interviews back to back as quick as possible. Yep. We need to record them. We need to see what they're going to ask you because that's how I'll do the same thing. If I'm doing like the certain type of interviews and it's something I stumbled on. Okay. Mental note. I know how to answer that next time. Yep. Especially if somebody asks me, okay, I'm going to go here, here and here and here. Like I know how to do it. So especially technical questions, like yeah. being technical on the spot is, that's the kind of pressure that is just hard at all levels. Like interviewing for software engineering levels, even when you're a senior, is hard because it's like, you want me to do what? 
right. code on a code on a board. Nobody right. does that. Like, right. and back in the yeah. day, you know, y'all ain't have no copilot or GPT four and all that kind of stuff. No. to use. No, you so. have to actually know things. Uh huh. So, with that being said, so where was your other offer from? Uh, you had the first one from Big M. Um, Tata Consultancy it was okay. like a it was like a huge consultancy firm out. Yeah, I think I, I think they're based in India, but they had a they had a really big presence. I don't know if they still do. Um, um they were gonna move me out to Chicago, and I was like, hey, and then Microsoft was like, psych. Mm-hmm. So did when you started working for Microsoft, uh, did you stay in Florida? Did you move? They moved me to San Francisco. Ooh, nice. No, I did. I wasn't a fan. Oh yeah, you're an East Coast girly. And I didn't think it would be that much of a difference, but it was, and I felt it. I was like, but outside of work, I was just sad. I what was, was so it sad. the fact? What was it the fact it was San Fran? Because I've I've heard people saying like, it ain't that many black people in San Francisco. But I didn't like like for example. I had a better time in Oakland. Like I had one friend, her name is Rispa. Shout out to Rispa. Um, that's still my girl. But we would do stuff in Oakland, but I still was just like, this is not my vibe. Now I will say I've gone back recently because I've had a lot of friends who moved out there and the vibe is very, it's a little different. Like I probably, I would have been more bearable if I, bearable if I had those friends yeah. then. But um, no, it just wasn't. It wasn't hitting the way I needed it to hit for me. And then it didn't help that my family was so far. I don't need to be right next to my family, but I want to be able to get to you easily. That wasn't happening. And the flights are so expensive. Then California's already taking all your check. It just yeah was a time. Yeah. You know, that's funny you say that. You're the second guest I've talked to that's moved like farther away from where they're from. Being a woman, pretty much by themselves at a new company. So I think if companies do do that, luckily you were a person, I, I assume you were mentally strong enough, like you lasted there a long time. But some nine people months. don't. Nine months. Oh, well, I mean, at least she was still at the company, not in San Fran. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah friend, she, uh, she was in a ro- three year rotational program and she was talking about how, like, you know, she got put on the PIP and she didn't make it. Because of just not being aware of certain things that she was doing and little microaggressions here and there that manager management was doing. And just she said she was depressed. She was in a long distance relationship and it was just her out there. Same girl, same. I hope she's living her best life now. Yeah, she is. I think y'all are in similar roles now. So we're not going to stay on it long. So I remember looking through your IG and you said you did a lot of different roles at Microsoft. This is a different question off the top of the head, but what was your favorite role that you did at Microsoft? Oh my goodness. Okay. I really loved being a technical evangelist. Now, like I said, they call them developer advocates because it's crazy because I don't like people. People say I'm so friendly, but I just be like, oh, I got to talk to people. You do give me like, if somebody say, hey, how you doing? I sit by you, you'll talk to them. I guess. I'm not rude, but I will be in my head thinking, why are you talking to me? <laughs> but I'm not going to make it weird. Like, I will talk. Now, the conversation goes left, and I'm like, oh, I'm happy you talk to me. But in initially, I'm like, yo, we don't have to do this. Um, But, you know, being a technical evangelist, like you, I was always traveling. I was always going to a conference because essentially your job, like I said, which is what developer advocates are now, right, is you are on a vertical, whatever your vertical is, whatever your tech vertical is, and you're always sharing the latest and greatest. So I would go to conferences. And it's just like, I'm talking about this new project that I built on this new Microsoft technology. And this is why you as a software engineer should be doing it. So it's like, it's like I'm going to Afrotech and just talking about, or giving a workshop, or I was going to Grace Hopper giving workshops, like stuff like that. 
And that is so fun because I really feel like A, the best way to know if you know something, like if you are super technical, is if you can teach it. That's A. But B was that job gave us so much freedom on how we wanted to teach people. So we could do workshops. So my focus was Internet of Things, but like a JavaScript solutions. Um, so big Azure cloud, but IoT. And one of my favorite things I would teach people was I would make these mini cars. So I'd get these, I would have Microsoft buy, well, my company, my team, buy these hardware kits that were already like laser cut and people would build cars. And then we would take an Arduino and put the Arduino on the cars. And cars. Arduino was like a little chip. I don't have one near me, but do I? I, asked, I only asked again just in case the audience wanted to know, but I was using context to figure out it was something that makes the car move. This is a hold on. I have I have a bunch of chips. Like I said, I was an electrical engineer, so I'm gonna pull one I out. Even, I, that, that might be a part two because I need tap into. It. Okay, here we go. These. Okay. So I haven't touched these in a long time. This is an Arduino, and I, essentially I would like clip it to the car or like, you know, there, there's a space on the car. I wish I had, I used to have a bunch of these cars cause I would build them all the time. Um, and it was a space for it. And I think it was, it was a smaller version of this. It wasn't this big one. Oh, so and, me and the Legos. <laughs> no. I actually, I probably would be, I just never try, but, um, ah, this is the one that's how small it was. And it okay. would sit on the car and you would connect it to the cloud and then you connect it to your computer. And you would literally drive the car with your keyboard. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we would use it to like, I would, it's like we're doing Internet of Things because the data we're pulling in is how fast. Or sometimes I would up it and be like, we'd add other sensors to it. So the data we're pulling in is like, um, you know, did it crash into something? Did it like a motion sensor or like a, I forgot what the word is, but just, fi just figuring out different things. Or other ones I would do. I have, I have so many of these chips here. That's other ones cool. that gave I me would, an idea. Yeah, other ones I would do with like with like weather. So like we would make like weather emulators, and it, it could tell you the weather. But the purpose wasn't the project because those seemed like pretty elementary, right? The purpose was teaching people how to take data, you know, from these chips and put them on a the cloud, and then you could do whatever you want with them. So people would actually like make that like they would sit in these workshops and people who are more advanced or had more time like they finished quickly they would build like uh whole websites like drive the car and like how like, people would have different users they would connect several cars people make games out of it um with like the weather ones people would make whole weather dashboards for the weather in their house like i've seen people do such incredible things and that that was so fun like i really loved that job and i loved my team at that job. Oh my goodness. I had such a great team. I had such a great boss. Oh, I had two bosses because I was in California with that job and then I moved to San Francisco and both were the team, the job, the managers, like everybody was amazing. Um, and I feel like that role, it's like I had to be technical, but I got to be creative. And I don't think that is always something people have opportunity to do. So it definitely was my favorite. Do I think I could have stayed there forever? Probably not, but definitely my favorite. Right. Yeah. What you saying the technical and creative thing is like pretty cool because I shot an episode earlier today with my co-host Destiny and we were, I was just rambling on about, I would love to do some more creative security and awareness training for users because I was like, at this point, everybody pretty much does the same type of security awareness training almost at every company in some sort of fashion is similar. And I was like, I would love to get free reign to like get a team and we actually do some stuff that's going to make people want to do it versus I'm just going to let the thing play and click, 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 and I'm going to be through it. Like, you know, no one's learning anything from that. So, but that's just a, that's a separate conversation. But when you said that, that's what I initially went to when I said, hmm, I got some ideas. I'm like, I wonder how would I go about doing that and actually do those roles exist. But we know you've said since the beginning of this pod podcast episode, you said worked. So that's past tense for you, you used to work there. Yeah. And I was, like I said, you, I commented on your Instagram video about, you said why you had to leave. So 
In so many words, because think about it, right? You were working at like one of the top tech companies. I think they've been doing good with their stock, even though they've been having some security issues over the last couple of months. But a lot of people say, oh, I would never leave so-and-so company. I'll stay forever. That was me. Really? Oh, yeah. I If you had asked me up until I actually decided to leave, I wasn't going to go. I loved it. I love my benefits. I love the amount of stock that was being thrown at me every year. Um, and I, I generally liked my the environments I was in. Like I, I there really wasn't any one. I can't say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was. I won't let you do a, anything like that. Let's say, let's say, let's say, at every team I was on, right? Every team I was on, I always liked at least eighty five percent of the people I worked with. Sometimes more than that. Mm-hmm. There were a few teams where it was like, eh. but for the most part, like I, I really truly enjoyed being there, and I really wanted to hit ten years. Like I was like, oh, that was like that's such a big thing when you hit ten years. Um, I got to six. I got to seven. Seven. I got to seven. Um. But yeah, I had to roll. We had to. Okay, Chris Brown. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I could totally understand. Like, I would have, I think, I, the longest I've been at a company is like almost four years. And I thought, like, I thought I would have been at like my first security job at that company forever. And then that's when corporate America kind of showed me how it really is and when I was laid off. So since then, I've probably always been having my head on a swivel, trying to just mm-hmm. make sure I'm not caught up in that. I mean, but for you, the last seven years, that's pretty cool. I would also assume that that developer advocate role gave you a lot of visibility internally and externally to where you built up probably like a pretty strong network. Yeah. So what was really cool about the developer advocate role was a lot of people I worked with were PMs, which I didn't know at the time. Um, And I think that also helped me with my transition to being a product manager because I became a software engineer only because the team I was on, the technical evangelist team I was on, we just got reorged. And they were like, well, y'all are technical, y'all are now software engineers, okay? Um, but I wasn't really, I, not once, I just wasn't happy with what I was doing. The team was cool, everybody's cool, I just wanted to do something else. And that's how I transitioned to being a PM at Microsoft. But a lot of that was because of the networking that I did. Mm-hmm as a technical evangelist, because we work so closely with these other PMs um, and those people became my mentors or just people I always like worked with, stuff like that, so. Yeah, that's um that's cool. Cause that's what I was thinking too, because like I've seen, I can remember for you and I talked about this in our intro call, but I've seen the rise of people wanting technical people to be you know, project managers, program managers, product managers. I've seen that. like. Like Microsoft has some now that's like, hey, we want these technical program managers if they got like cybersecurity experience. <laughs> so, in it, but to be honest, it is something I think makes my job easy because, <laughs> like, I can speak the, the the language of my engineers. If there's something I do miss about being a product manager at Microsoft, it's everybody was technical. Like, if I did want to take up a ticket and code. That day, I could. Nobody was stopping me. They were actually praising it, like, "Oh wow, you know, she's so technical. She just used that." Um, and I remember when I was getting the job as a PM, the engineering lead told me they were scared I wasn't going to take the job, and I was like, "Why?" And they were like, "Technical people don't like being PM, so we thought this would just be too easy for you." And I was like, "This is great," because once again, I speak the language. I understand the product. I understood the product already because I was using it. But also, like, when it came time to planning, when it came time to, oh, we have this major bug or we have this delay or whatever, the engineers could just tell me what's going on. I'd be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like, I took my first two weeks of joining the team that I joined to really, like, read the code. Like, I told my team I want Visual Studio installed with a code base. I should be able to access it at all times so I know what's going on so I can really speak to my product. Versus like where I'm at now, that's not happening. 
I have volunteered to help my help my engineers code, and my team was like, "That's not your job." And I'm like, <laughs> it's like it's gonna be a no for me, dog. Yeah, which is I I understand. I do understand. Like I that was a that was a big tech thing. Big tech wants you to be technical. Like it makes sense, but yeah, no, nah. yeah, like yeah, I think that's like I wouldn't mind though, especially if it's a like I said a project or something like I know and I get to. You no know, help lead it because I can lean on it. Well, I don't have to lean on the engineers because I understand like the why and, and what behind everything. I wouldn't mind it. I mean, I'm already decent at talking to people. And technically, I do a lot of small time project stuff with, I mean, I've had a lunch of course. I do this different stuff with this content and plan this other stuff out. So I probably could see myself doing it one day, maybe if they want me. But let's talk about the transition to you going to a, a different conglomerate and we don't have that will remain nameless but you don't have to we can, we can say it I don't mind well I only said that because I've had times where people's uh, companies and stuff watching like hey you said this take that down and all this other stuff so I, I've i I've tailored myself where I won't say anything crazy or if I can't answer I'm gonna just be like yeah I can't it's a wrap. I don't mind telling people. I mean, if you go on No Issue Codes, you're going to find out where I work regardless. Right. So. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. What made you, I'm pretty sure you were a highly coveted free agent. What made you pick them? <laughs> I picked the NBA because as I was just looking for other opportunities, I kind of had like this epiphany. At Microsoft, I was working on developer tooling, which was cool because I was building what I used to use. So I felt very connected to my product and I really enjoyed that work. Um, but I realized I'm connected to other things. Like there's other things that get me excited that probably have a technical team. Basketball was one of them. Now, when I say basketball was one of them, I don't mean like I'm a diehard fan because I am not. So don't start asking me all types of crazy questions. But I like the experience of sports in general. Like you could take me to any game. I just discovered recently that I actually really enjoy hockey. Hey, I'm going to be with it. Only thing I haven't done is a tennis match, but that's not important right now. We'll get there. Um, so I was like, cool. You left football out. I love football, but I, I'm saying I'm pretty, I, I went to Florida State. I love football, like <laughs> love football. Um, that's probably my favorite sport, but in general, I just like the environment of sports. And I, I really wanted to do something consumer facing. I think something that isn't differentiated enough between companies and products is what's a consumer facing product and what's a business application, you know, like, and to give an example for users, like consumer would be like Instagram. That is for the masses, X, Y, Z. A business application that people are also building and coding on would be like Microsoft Word. Yeah. Right. And the demand between the two are very different. Um, so I didn't realize that, but I knew I wanted something that consumers saw more, right? Like when I would tell people, oh, I work at Microsoft, and they're like, oh, what do you work on? And I'm like, Visual Studio. People are like, the fuck is that? Unless, unless you are technical, unless right. you are in that space, you don't know what that is. And I wanted something that I could be like, I work on blah, 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 blah. And you're like, yeah, for real? Like, I use X, Y. Like, that's what I wanted. And I got it. I'm here. So now people are like, what do you do? And it's like, oh, we're going to NBA app. Boom. Like, even if you don't use it, you know what it is. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I know that's me. Like, as I'm in cybersecurity, I've been trying to be, well, technically, I've been in finance the last couple of years. But I've been trying to be in a space where I work on something that maybe like consumers recognize that's like, I know what I'm protecting and helping with is actually helping the, the consumer. So I've been looking at different industries like that just because it interests me. And they, there are different challenges, different attack yeah. methods that people use in different industries. And that's what I've been interested in of bringing my unique skill set and, and viewpoint to a different type of companies. So I could don't let them know what I know, or as my boy on power said, I'm about to tell them what I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But so I know you said you work on the NBA app. So what is your like I guess an official title now? And at a high level, could you explain to us like a day in the life with in a TikTok voice? 
Uh, I could try. Uh, so um, I'm still, a pro- I went from at Microsoft, they were called program managers. Now I'm a product manager, um, hoping one day to be senior product manager. But um, that's what I do. My vertical is digital events, AKA tent poles. The word tent pole isn't very known to a lot of people. But essentially, tent poles are the major, huge events that happen throughout a company. So everybody has tent poles. We just might not call them tent poles. So at the NBA, your tent poles are, you know, the in season tournament that was new, All Star Weekend, playoffs. So as you know, as you can imagine, I'm busy right now. Um, the draft um, and summer league. Not many people know about as much people know about summer league, but that's considered a temple. And so my role is I literally need to know all things that's happening on our website and on the um, the app surrounding these digital events. Um, I work I because of that. I pretty much work with everybody. Like I'm always doing cross team collaboration because there are different people for different um, parts of our digital experiences. So there's somebody who's in charge of the games and the game experience. There's someone who's in charge of the content. There's someone who's in charge of how the data flows and shows up for all you guys. And literally all tent poles involve those things. <laughs> like, so um, it's interesting. I can't say like every little feature you see during draft or playoffs is, oh, that was my work. Um, but I can say that I had to know about it. I had to know, I had to know how it functioned just in case somebody else had questions. And then there are specific stuff that I, I did work on. So if you ever open up the NBA app and you open up a playoffs bracket, I worked on that. Not solely, but I worked on it. Call it your girl. Okay. And I know you kind of mentioned it earlier. So you would say you have like somewhat a little bit like withdrawals of times like you can't code when you want to and like you take it away. I do miss coding. I do. Um, but I it's just not what I want to do every day, but I want to do it when I want to do it. Right. Because there's something about like your code working, like you're solving a problem and your code works, like that feeling is so unmatched. Um, and I also feel like I'm losing my technical skills, which kind of bothers me a little bit at time. So. Yeah, man, you know me, I'm hyped when my code say hello world. So that and if you're not excited about hello world, you shouldn't code that. I believe that <laughs> all day. If hey. you do hello world and you're like, oh, whatever, don't, this is not for you. Right. The memes of uh, everybody talking about like, I'm a programmer now because I say hello world, like I never yeah. But that's, I mean, that's the other part, I guess, about, like, for me, it's not, I've never been, I don't think I ever would, I can't say could, because if I, like, put the time down and to learn it, because to me, coding is just like learning another language. Just like if I want to go learn Spanish or French or whatever, like, I just have to put the work in, make practical reasons to code stuff, and it'll stick with me. And kind of just know the foundations of, of, like if, we, if you're teaching somebody English, like the foundations of the English language of understanding the syntax of how to make sentences, the similar stuff that has to come with any programming language. But for me, my issue has always been like in scripting is just, I take a class and learn it, but if I don't use it in the practical sense at work on the day to day, it's like- It's not, yeah, that's anything. Yeah. That's anything. You know, fun fact, and I mean, I feel like you know this, but you don't actually think about it, right? You can only code in English. What you mean? Like programming languages, anything they really use that is a word or like a variable or some type of whatever, everything is in English. There isn't like a, for example, if you're doing a variable, you do in JavaScript, you'll do let, whatever the variable name is equals something, right? Let is an English word. Like yeah. every, every, thing used to build programming languages are in English. And one day that really hit me like, yo, that is so true. You don't like, you're not coding in any other language except English. Maybe maybe your comments are in a different language, but the actual code you're executing is in English. I didn't even think about it like that. As I said, you know it, you just don't. Right. Yeah. 
funny I enough, someone said it to me and I was like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's facts. Yeah. Funny enough, we were reviewing a, a case about people using AI to create malicious PowerShell scripts. And one of the knocks on it was that it was too clean. Now you can tell when somebody used AI to do something, it was like, this looks like AI generated. Like these comments don't read like a person who would actually comment something in their code would say. <laughs> so I just thought about that when you brought up like everything's in English and I said like English. your comments be in a different language sometimes. So they give away. I wonder do they do that in school and like, hey, we checking to see if you use AI. And you better I, at least I different. feel like there has to be a way to know, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm, they're probably going to build different type of programs. Like, this is not, this is kind of in line with AI only because, you know, they have these AI can like clone people's voices and stuff now. And I was like, at this point, we got to figure out how to trademark our voice. That's, but I mean, it's happening in the music industry. So, That's yeah. What I mean. So it's like, think about it, like, think about you had a boyfriend and somebody said, oh, I don't like, I'm going to take Gabrielle's man. So guess what? I'm going to listen to him talk on something and I'm going to start playing it back and act like we on the phone talking. That ain't never going to happen to me. I ain't worried. But see, that's <laughs> one of the things. Hey, listen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. One, if that ever start happening, you got to believe your man when he say, man, believe what you want. And he walk off. No, gotta... believe what you want. This is this is so we're going left field here. But believe what you want is not the best thing to say. Believe what you want makes you a liar. You need to say something else. Just be like, bro, like a, a man who wants me to believe him better just be like, it wasn't me. Like I didn't do it. Believe what you want means you're so frustrated because you know you're lying. You know you're lying. That's it. That's it. That's, that's the only that's the only segue I'm going into this. We don't have to discuss it no more. Or you could just hit the Mr. Brown and say, I'm sorry. And then, <laughs> but so I want to ask you, I guess, like, I don't know what you want to with her. I'm probably cut that out. So, outside of like your technical skills, what soft skills did you need to make this transition? Did you get any certifications? Did you take any courses? Did you do anything like that whatsoever? No, the thing is, product management is so new. Being a project manager has always been around, right? Project management has always been a thing. But product and program management is so new. Like, it was a role that was there, but that's, no, that's not what they were calling it. Or it was technically a, probably an engineer. Or somebody else on the team was doing the role of a product or project manager, right? Um, and it's so new to the industry that... There are courses you can take, but there's so many different ways to get into it. Like, I didn't have to do any of that, especially if you, and I, I say this for anything, even if it's the other way around, like you start as a PM and you want to become a software engineer. If you work at any technical company and you think you want to try some other role in that company, the best way to try that new job is transitioning that company. Make good with that team and start to kind of put that bug in their ear. Because at the end of the day, if it's a good team, if it's a good company, it's about your growth and your job progression. And if they like working with you in the capacity that you work with them now, that manager should be okay training you if they have the capacity for a lower level role. No, I definitely agree. Like companies that, you know, want you to do internal moving around is perfect. I mean, I'm with it. I know that's a hard part too. When it comes to interviewing nine times out of 10, they probably already had somebody internal lined up and they just posted it because they had to like, yeah, <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to get that inside scoop. But like, look, man, Hey, what's the real, um, like, y'all what's going on? Y'all already got somebody in mind. Cause that's happened to me a couple of times. And, you know, I just charge you to the game, but so, I'm going to get into my, my podcast bag of um, what's what's one question that you wish I asked you that I didn't ask? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we covered a lot of stuff. Um, I got one for you. Okay. What's something about your job, and it can either be this current one or previous job, that you will down the hill about? I 
I think work-life balance. Like all these things, all these jobs have taught me that a job is a job. Close the damn laptop. And I say all this to say like every job has a busy season, but if you feel like you're in busy season all year long, reevaluate what the heck is going on because that's no way to live. And once again, a job is a job. Or even if like, it's okay if your job is constantly moving and it feels really busy, but if it's a job that supports time off still, like I feel like I've had roles too, where it's like, it's so crazy, but if I want to take off, my boss is like, okay, cool go do you like that's you know that's a part of work life balance so if you feel like your job isn't giving you that leave i die on that hill yeah and um i also want to ask you a little bit about you know no uh, no way she codes uh, what else do you do outside of of that do you do anything extracurricular like are you a business woman or so it's so funny you asked me this because I was doing website development. That was my way of staying technical with no AC codes, but I actually made the choice this week to stop. Um, I, not that I don't want to continue doing something with my business, but I think I want to move to um, consulting instead of one-off website building here or there. It just, no, it, it's not giving what it needs to give. So um, yeah, I, I want to figure out how to transition into technical consulting, helping. I, I've had a lot of fun, like people have come to me for websites when really what they needed is consultant, like how we're going to build their full product. Mm -hmm. And I've had three of those and I really like them. I really like coming in, helping them realize what are we building? How are we doing this? Revamping what needs to be revamped, doing some user testing and like, let's have the direction of your product, pulling in other teams, like you need to hire this person, that person, that person. Like I'm a, like I'm kind of the CTO. Okay. I like that feeling. So I really want to transition into that, which probably means more working with startups and stuff like that, which is okay. Cause I, I want to be on contract. You don't have to hire me. Yeah. Um, money. So I'm trying to figure out what that looks like. So mm -hmm. I just need to wait till the season is up. Um, and I'll probably focus on that transition. Okay. And I wanted to ask you this. I don't always try to make these shows all about the moolah, right? Is there, well, granted, you was, you're a senior into your career, but. Not yet. Hoping. You're deaf. Well, how I view it, I, I we view things like in cyber, like if you got five, six, seven, whatever years, like technically you can qualify for senior level roles. So I view it as like you're senior. But it's like I'm not five, I'm not seven years as a PM. Right. If I had I'm, if I had this whole thing as a software engineer, by now, yeah, you're absolutely right. But I'm gonna say your software engineering skills give you a couple of years. So I'm gonna say senior. I'll take it. Fine. Speak yeah, speak greatness speak onto my life. Mm -hmm. Speak it, believe it, receive it. But so is there like a pay dis not a pay disparity, but like is it lateral? Or did you get more cheese to go to the NBA? I'm going to say this. Big tech is big tech because they are paying big bills. Mm -hmm. Once you leave big tech, you will not be getting paid the same way. And that's not even just base salary. Like, I think one thing I really miss is my stock. Yeah. Stock just is free money that they're just, here you go. It's yeah. yours. You want some more? Here's That's the only reason why people want to go to a bigger company is literally just for that. For I the, hang in the cut and let it best, and then you know do what you gotta do. But you're right. It's, it, it really isn't all about money because if it if it was, I wouldn't have left. Um, but yeah, you can't expect the big tech salary anywhere. It's, it's not gonna happen. It's right. just not. Well, I see like different. It depends, right? Because you got big tech, and then you have other industries that still pay, um, good money as well like they may not be big tech but they're big like freaking atlassian is paying big money or if you get the fintech right 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 i will say when you leave tech when you leave tech you're not going to get paid the same if you're not working at a tech company who's doing well you're just not going to get paid the same because your salary 
is supposed to be competitive with like their competitors, which are other corporate yeah. businesses that aren't tech aligned. So yeah, and yeah, I would say that, it's that hit or miss so when you go to um, I say it's hit or miss. Like in finance, like depending on what they do in finance, it's hit or miss. But the higher you go up there, if your role is like really technical or important, you can make a good a chunk of cheese. And with some incentives on the back end for like your bonus and stuff, it, you just got to yeah. negotiate all that stuff. Everything is negotiable. Yeah. And I don't want to say that like I'm getting paid bad money because yeah, I'm yeah. not. I, I, I think I'm still making a good amount of money, but it's like, it's just not the same. Nah, I know. It's the same way of going from a bigger bank to a smaller bank sometimes. Yeah. But your, your peace of mind is worth more. It is. But I guess like in terms for people to understand, like, I had to, I went from oh I can stretch the budget a lot to I can't stretch the budget <laughs> girl there is no stretching stop stretching this is the budget for a reason right I think that's you know that's good to show you some discipline you know what I'm saying yeah but you know I'm I'm young and I'm trying to live please uh, after this episode they're gonna be DMing me no thank you <laughs> no thank you. Hey, I'm for real. They do be DMing me like, yo, hey, where you from? I don't answer. Hey, I'm like, listen, I'm, I tell all my friends to so come on here. Yo, boo, probably in them DM. Don't, yeah, he, listen, I don't respond to DMs. I don't believe in meeting men online, so. Okay, well, what if they don't meet you online? What well, if you just answer the DM and then they meet you in person? That's still, like, that first level is online. I don't believe any of that. I And the thing is, like, I really will talk to anybody on the internet because a big part of my platform is around building community and X, Y, Z. So I'll give the men, they try, like they come in talking about anime or they come in asking for whatever, whatever. Yeah. I'm not stupid, but once and I will, I will talk to you about that because that's what I'm here for. And one thing I won't do is like, I won't be known as like a little, as, as I'm a rude Instagram girl. We're not doing that. But once you start to pivot left, but what if, all right, and let's say they no. never pivot left, but this person, like, what if this is like your ideal dude, but he don't pivot left? He better but, hope we bump, each other and bump into each other in the street. Like, I'm doing See, do. now, let's say you, this, let's say this dude stay far away, but he just say, okay, cool. I know she and so-and-so, so I'm finna look, I'm finna camp out a week and be like, figure out what spot she at. Like, you don't find that suspicious? I give that creep. That's a little scary. But it, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, it's just a no for me. <laughs> I, I I have had men be like, I'm going to be in your city for a week. I'm coming to see you. Why are you coming to see me? Right. I don't think Why are you see, coming to see me? To say, they're not supposed to say I'm coming to see you. They should. See, if they were smart, they would probably be best off of. I don't know if it works. They probably try to do it in the past. Like, try to at least do business or whatever. Right versus trying to no make... because doing business automatically puts you in a friend zone <laughs> sorry like it just there's really no winning because it ain't social... listen, listen fellas i'm trying to help y'all but it ain't there's no it's change. really not like social media to me is already hard because i'm giving i'm giving pieces of me and mm-hmm. i feel like people feel like oh my god i know so much about her but you don't know me like you know a very cur- curated version of who I am and what I like, but you don't know me. And the things you probably think move me or get me excited, it's like. So, fellas, the only way you got a chance is you figure out where she at. You find you me on the street. Cars, you get one of them cars and you put the thing on it and, and code it and. And maybe you bump into her or somewhere that she frequent and go from maybe you see her at Whole Foods, you know? Or maybe or no, yeah, no, there's really no way. There's really yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't do dating apps. Maybe yeah, you see yeah. at the bodega or something, I don't know. I've tried all that and it's just like this is not it doesn't work for me. <laughs> in mean, person in person or no person. I better try to see her at a conference or something. I don't know. Hello. Some, some that's that's where they trying to find look. While we laughing, that's what people, women be like. People do women. that. I mean, like the whole Afro tech, I'm going to find my husband. Now, let's talk about that really quickly. Yeah. When I went to my first Afro tech, I really did go back to my friends. And I was like, yo, you trying to find your man? They probably at Afro tech because it's all these black professional men. 
and they're either looking for a job or they have a good job, like whatever. That was 2019. I was joking. And so for this year, for it to be like a thing, like I'm going to Afrotech to find my husband. Like so many people pull up to Afrotech with no actual tickets to Afrotech. Facts. In 2022, it wasn't as bad. Like it just seemed like everybody's not there for a good party, but definitely, I'm not going to lie. The woman, the women was thirstier than the men down there. It just was a lot. And I was like, no. You know, my biggest advice is, and people could always say this, but I think when you put out this kind of desperate energy, you're not going to get what you're looking for. But when you are just flowing, growing, doing your thing, everything will align with you. Right. So what you're saying is you see the Meg challenge as desperate energy. No, don't. I did not say that. <laughs> I did not say that. If you want to go online and shake your ass, you do that, sis. I'm all for women doing what they want with their bodies. Me too. I think I think they could do what they want to do. Uh, I don't know what much comes from it. We have studies that, that, that see, like, like, yeah, hey, it's their prerogative. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the reason why I don't really care what men say is men have problems with my social media, and it's just like. Oh, I've had, I've dated men. That's just like, or I want to say date. I don't mean like became my boyfriend because we, we, we couldn't even make it that far based off this conversation, but it's just, yeah. Like apparently I do too much on Instagram and it's like. But if he already know, you don't even answer DMs. Like how are you doing too much? But people don't believe that. Or when I answer DMs, because like I said, I will talk to you on the, the community side. People don't believe that when men slide in my DMs, I don't answer. I'm gonna need these men to stand up. Just <laughs> tell them I'm not talking to you. That's rude. I would never. I would never do that. But people don't believe me, and I. I this is that's that's a whole other like whatever. But you know, I think date dating is just dating. Yeah, I think it's really just because we've been like everybody's been on social media like the last 15 years. And we just seen so much of people. You do have women that are literally trying to get so much attention on there. And it's like, okay, I really like you, but I know for a fact these other guys don't really like you, but you put so much of yourself out there in a certain way that you may bite on one of them. One of them may be cuter than me. One of them may be taller. One of them may have more money. But I think, okay, pause. I'm telling you what's something. I, think, I don't care about that. I, I think it'd go both ways. Oh my gosh, what the Anyway, I think it go both ways. Um, but I also just think it's like, I guess I would want a man where it's like, you don't care about those things because you know me, I know you, and you know this is fake. I take a level of maturity and a, a lot less of insecurity from probably like both people. Because mm -hmm. that's why I really feel like two attractive people should be together. Not like, I think they should be yoked in the looks. So you're saying, did you, are, are you saying I shouldn't date for personality? Personality too, but I'm saying, like, cause some but dudes- What like, if all they have is personality? If they ain't, that's all they got, I doubt you'll talk to them because they're going to definitely have that some type of career dealing with you. No, well, I mean, let's say they have everything but looks. Am I supposed to not talk to that man? You can talk to him as long as he's secure in himself. He not insecure. I guess. Like I said, we will never I know. Used to say the woman is supposed to be the attractive one. We'll never know. I'm just here. Right. Stay and tuned. Then, am I dating? Am I not dating? Stay tuned right. on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Right. The bottom line is, fellas, y'all ain't got no chance, man. Not in the DM. Sorry to that. Yeah, my hey, y'all better like. I don't know. I mean, you know what? Hey, if y'all want an idea on how y'all can win. Come sign up for a consultation. I'll give you a game plan on how to get Shameless plugs. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. I'll give you a game plan. That'd be cool. Okay. I'm like, you know what? We may have to do a web series for the love of you. Like, how fun would it be on a separate channel to have you on here and have these guys come on like the live, live Once stream? again, would never do it. And I think it's because I, I live on the camera and I yeah. don't want my love life to be on the camera. Yeah. I think a one-off episode would probably be interesting. Just like like it would be all jokes but then you know what that sounds like you know when people would do that thing with the balloons where they pop yeah. and stuff like i don't that like. to me is so it's, stupid I like was, i think that stuff is scripted because it was one chick on there she was bad i was like ain't no way these dudes gotta be on the dl for them to tell this woman though 
She had everything together. Yeah, so I don't know. It's like stuff like that. I'm just like, why do we need to put ourselves through this? Right. And here's the last one. I know you said you like all sports. Do you watch boxing? Yeah, I like it. I haven't been to a boxing match. Um, really? I watch it like with my brothers or my dad. If like they have it on, but I haven't been to a match. That I thought it was an experience I would enjoy for sure. Yeah, I've been to two. I want to go to one of the Barclays actually. Um, mm. Barclays is pretty good. I don't know. So Devin Haney and uh, Ron Garcia, Devin Haney and Ron Garcia are fighting next week on the twentieth. I know it's. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm actually a Devin Haney fan. I really like him. Yeah, I think I have Devin winning. Um, Ron Garcia. And I hope Ryan just. It's okay. I hope everything is okay with him. Man, going he's, through that dude was faking. He's trying to sell the fight. Oh, I get it. whatever you say. I don't be playing about people with mental health. I used to. So. so I used to like commentate on boxing a lot. I used to have a whole boxing channel, so yeah. I used to keep up with it a lot. I still keep up with it, but not like I used to. I'm, I'm yeah. telling you, like, dude. Like if he really was gone, he it would be no way they would clear him to fight. I feel that. Okay. You have to that pull out. Makes sense. You have to pull out. Um. Any last things you want to leave the visitors, with, <laughs> the visitors or the watchers with, with like uh, any wise words? Uh, follow your girl at No Way She Codes. I'm all for men followers, but really looking for a lot more women, which is harder in the tech space. But um, yeah, No Way She Codes, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, mostly active on Instagram. Definitely not active on Twitter. You can find No Way She Codes on Twitter, but I don't be saying nothing. Um, and always remember just it's a tough time for everybody right now. So if you're not getting a job, if you feel like it's just nothing's working out for you, try and be patient because it's not working out for nobody. That's the truth. Not in this industry. Yeah, and that's facts. And look, you know, she is famous on Instagram. So stop through and say hey and say hey, I watched the podcast and you know. And also, guys, let you know, subscribe to the Patreon. But I am planning a giveaway when I get back to 30,000 subs. So make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. And I appreciate y'all for rocking with us. Until next time, let's stay textual. And we out. Peace. Bye.